Welcome to another video from McFatter Tech Musser. If you like these videos, please click subscribe. Okay, welcome back. We're going to do another Wireshark Lab today, or this evening, I guess I should say. Well, this time of the year, it's already dark out. It's not even 6 o'clock yet. Oh well, we deal with it, right? Okay. Hey, so I'm not recording from school today. This is uh, We're making this up so that uh, my students can uh, pick us up later on. We're going to be looking at ICMP. What do we use ICMP for? You know, ping, trace route. That's what we're going to be looking at, how that works. So if you're one of my students, well, of course, we've I've ported this into Desire to Learn now. So I'm just going to jump into there, into my quizzes. And right there it is. Let's get this started. Let's get this show on the road. It's a fairly short lab. Won't take too, too awfully long. I'll probably talk more than it's worth. But uh, we can see there's there's a write-up you can download from D2L if you if so desire. There's only a total of 20 questions. And of course, there's going to be some evidence that we got to present, right? So we need, of course, if you're one of my uh, students, you've already got access to there on that home page. Uh, the Wireshark 8.0 trace files, and that's where we're going to find our ICMP dash ethereal dash trace one dash dash one, and then uh, later on we're going to be using the ICMP dash ethereal dash trace two. So right now we're going to go ahead, we're going to get that loaded up, that trace dash one file. We're going to add a display filter of ICMP. We're going to expand. Internet Protocol version 4 and ICMP. We're going to select, make sure that first ICMP packet selected. Then we're going to either do Control Alt Shift A or you can do it the slow way and go edit, copy all visible items and then paste that into our evidence. So let's jump over here. Okay, where are we at here? Here we are. I've already got my 8.0 traces as the older traces. You can see they're dated from January of last year. Got my trace one selected, and here we are. I'm going to move my uh, hexadecimal ASCII 2 over here to the side. I'm going to get our ICMP filter in place. There we are. And we can see that first ICMP packet is a ping request. Remember, ping is active reconnaissance. We're going to expand ICMP and IPv4. Control Alt Shift A. Got my evidence. Going to paste it in my text box. There we are. First question's out of the way. So now, I'm not going to type all these answers in. Well, maybe I'll help you with one or two. But I'm not going to type these in. You can see everything right on your screen, right? Absolutely. What's the IP address of your host use that, that's using in, uh, in, in, our, in our trace file? Huh? What's the name of the host? What's the IP address of that host? Well, our, whore, our, yeah, our, horst, our host is where it's coming from, right? If you've done my display and column lab, you've got similar... To what I've got on my screen right here. You can see source address, source port, source uh, destination address, destination port. Now it looks like maybe I, well, whoa, there's no ports there. Huh. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that. So source, source address, that's our host. You see it there. Type it in. I'm not going to type that in. What's the IP address of the destination host? Well, Destination address. Type it in. This is too hard, right? Yeah. Now nah, you're you're on a roll now, right? So here, this is your this is where you're going to do some research. Why is it that an ICMP packet does not have source and destination port numbers? It doesn't. It doesn't use ports, right? What are ports associated with? Think about that for a second. Do a little bit of research. Give me a textual response. Don't give me one line, uh, because it doesn't use ports. No. Sorry. Eh, eh. 
Tell me why. Very important that you understand that. Hint, hint, research your OSI layers. Moving on. Examine one of the ping request packets sent by your host. Obviously, we can look at that first packet, right? What is the ICMP type? Well, take a look. It's literally right there on your screen, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be kind. I'm going to highlight it right there. What's your answer? Did I hear eight? I hope so. I hope I heard eight. Yeah, I'm actually going to answer this one. Let's take another look here. Examine one of the ping request packets sent by your host. What's the ICMP code number? Well, it's right there too, right? I gotta make these things more difficult. This is too easy. This is this is this is a relatively easy lab, but a quick lab, right? Some of the other ones like DNS or well, DNS was easy. No, I uh, TLS. Maybe our 802.11 labs that you see later on, they might push you a little bit. Well, obviously our code zero, right? I sure hope nobody gets that wrong. Now you might have to dig a little bit. Let's me, let me, uh, I'm just going to resize this a little bit. I'm going to move this over to the side. And it says examine that same ping request packet. Same one that we've been working with, right? What other fields, what other fields does that packet have? The ICMP packet. Does it have a data? Hmm. Does it have a sequence number? Does it have a checksum? Does it have an identifier? Remember, it's asking what other fields. We've already identified which ones. We've identified the type and the code. Well, does it have data? Does it have sequence number? Does it have checksum? Does it have identifier? Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm afraid it does. Like I said, I got to make these things more difficult. This is too easy. But this is what it's about. Learning about it. You can read this stuff in a textbook. They don't tell you all this stuff. Seeing it in action. Seeing it and understanding how Wireshark works. That's what sets you apart from other people. From other professionals. Learn how this stuff works. Take a look at the checksum, the sequence number, the identifier fields. How many bytes in size are they? Checksum. How many bytes is that? Well, I can look at this. Yeah, I, I know I've done this for a while, right? But I can look at this and I can see at least three different places on my screen that I can determine how many bytes this is. How many, how, how, how big is a byte? In other words, how many bits in a byte? Could it be, am I hearing eight? Yeah, eight bits in a, in a byte. But take a look at that checksum, the identifier, the sequence number. Remember, we're not looking at the data. Checksum, sequence number, identifier. What's being displayed there? We can see some numeric values, but what? The numeric values there just for us to understand, right? Computer doesn't care about the, that number that we see, the the 512 or the 2 or the 26369 or the 359. That's a digit for our human brains that have been trained in base 10. What else is displayed there? What's that 0x? 
It's hexadecimal. Four hexadecimal characters. How many bits in each hexadecimal character? How many possible values in hexadecimal? 16, right. All zeros, all ones. What's it? In between, how do we add up those 16 combinations? Well, one bit can have two possible values, right? Two bits can have four possible values. Three bits can have, that's right, eight possible values. Well, four bits doubled again, 16. 16 possible values, so each, hexade each hexadecimal character is four bits. Well, I'm seeing four hexadecimal characters. Each one of those is four bits. Four bits and four bits is a byte. Look, right down here, right down at the very bottom of the screen, two bytes. Two bytes, two bytes, two bytes, two bytes. Zero, one, six, seven. It's also represented over here on the side, right here, zero, two hundred, over there, right there on the right hand side, zero, 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 two. Each one of those is two bytes. Now, let's jump to packet number four. We can see that that's the corresponding reply not just because it says reply, but because of our arrows right here. We can see the relationship between those two. What is the ICMP type? Now, I'm not going to type this one in. You can see it right there on your screen, right? You know where to look. We're looking at ICMP, right? What's the type? Type number is, I know you got it. Our next question, number 10, is what's the ICMP code number? It's right there. Type it in. So did you notice that the code was the same on the ping request and the ping reply? The type was different. One's a ping request, one's a ping reply. Code is the same. Taking a look We've got a type and we've got a code, right? What other fields does that ICMP packet have? Does it have a port? We already determined that ICMP doesn't use ports, right? We've got checksum. I can see identifier. Does there, is there an IP address in, in the ICMP? I don't think so. The sequence number and what's that last one? Yeah, the same four, the same four that we saw in the request. Here again, you probably already know this answer. You probably are on it. Question 12, how many bytes are, is that checksum sequence number identifier fields? How much is each one? You can see it right there on your screen. Those same types of hexadecimal values, right? Dos. Two. Now, as you can see, we're done with part one. We're going to move on to part two. In fact, I'll just type this in here just so I know where I'm at here. Because I get lost real easy, right? Now, let's continue our ICMP adventure by capturing packets generated by Traceroute program. Remember that Traceroute program can be used to figure out the path a packet takes from source to destination. Remember, each hop is a router. And as long as a packet can make its way across hop, 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 like a little bunny to its destination, even if one of those hops doesn't give you a response, keeps timing out, but it continues on to the next hop. What does that tell you? The router's still online, but it, they may have turned off ICMP. That router may have come under a denial of service attack at some point. So to defeat it, they say, you know what? We're not going to respond to pings. 
you can DDoS us all day long with, with those ping, ping packets, but we're not going to respond. So as long as it still makes it to its destination, that router's working fine. But what happens is it takes that destination. And in Windows, for example, we send a series of ICMP packets to that destination. And we set the time to live, the, a TTL to 1. So it hits the first hop, responds back. And then we increment it to the TTL to 2. It gets to the second, responds back. Increment the 3, increment the 4, increment the 5, 6, whatever, however many hops it takes till it finally gets to its destination. That's how that trace route works. So let's open up our ethereal trace two. Now we still have our ICMP filter in place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a screenshot. Cause I don't wanna just see one packet. I wanna see all that information. So I'm gonna take a screenshot and you're gonna probably have to add a file. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a screen capture. I don't care if you use a snipping tool, if you've got some type of, uh, if you do print screen and save it, uh, but you need to save that screen, save it JPEG, PDF, I don't care what. No, I'm sorry, not PDF. JPEG, PNG, it's gotta be image format, and upload that as your evidence. Should look something like what you see on your screen there. starting some of these same conversations over again, right? What's the IP address of your host? You can see it. It's a source, right? What's the IP address of the target? We can see the target, the destination, right? Here's a question for you. Here again, you're going to have to research this. In Windows, our ICMP uses TCP. In Linux or Unix, it uses UDP. If we were using UDP, would our protocol, because if you, if you look, the protocol that's in use is one, protocol one. See right here? See right there? Protocol one. If we were using UDP instead, would it still use protocol one? Well, that's a possible answer, but I hope you're gonna look this up because I'd hate to see you get this wrong. Lots of places you can research this. Do your research, get the correct answer. I'm not gonna give it to you. This is, this is your research. This is you taking the information that you know and applying it. That's what this is all about, okay? I expect you all to get the right answer. Taking a look at that ICMP echo packet. So you see here we've got echo and time to live exceeded. We don't see request and reply. Taking a look at that, it's got more fields than our regular, quote unquote, ICMP packet. What is included in those fields? Hmm? Take a look here. Examine the ICMP error packet, the error packet. It's our time to live. This is a ping res request. This is our response, right? What's included in those fields? Take a look here. I'm going to move this back up because we don't need to see all these other packets right now. So here's our IP, C, ICP, wow, long, it's been a long day. A lot of lectures, apologize. ICMP, here's our ICMP in that 
error pack, packet where, where, you know, time to live exceeded. Remember, this is incremented to one. What all do we see there? Do we have data? Mm. I'll let you decide whether you see any data there or not. Do we see the original source address? I'm sorry. Do we see the original source port? Is there a port? Is there a port? You better be saying no. Shout it. Yell at me. No. ICMP doesn't use ports. What about the original IP header? What are we looking at right there? Right there is that original header. Yeah, the original header's in there. If we scroll down, look. We also have the first eight bits of the original ICMP packet. See there, it says, even though this is the reply back, that error coming back from the time to live, the original packet, that those first eight bits are still in, are in there. First eight bytes, yep, they're there. That's it. There's no ports, there's no data. You see, it even, it even tells us here, select two correct answers, right? So simply by elimination, you can kind of figure this out, right? Okay, so we're almost done already. Can you believe this? We're, we're almost done. There's only two more questions left. Examine the last three ICMP packets received by the source host. So we need to scroll down to the last packets that are received by the host. So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. We're gonna scroll on down. Okay, ooh, one, two, three. I'm gonna move this back up, we'll scroll. There we can see those last three packets. Why are they different? What makes those last three packets different from all the other ones? I don't see a TTL exceeded anymore. What does that tell you? Do you think the datagrams made it all the way to the destination host before the TTL expired? Did the datagrams die in transit? Looks to me like we got a response back. Did the host start a new trace route? Well, if it started a new trace route, we should see that TTL expiring again, right? Did the destination device reset the connection TTL? Doesn't even sound likely. We got to the destination. And we got a reply back from the destination host. So that's all we're doing in Wireshark. Our last question, we're gonna look at a little screen capture here from a command prompt. And we're gonna, I'm gonna read this. So this is a trace RT, obviously on Windows then, right? If it was Linux, it'd be trace route. We can see, looking down that listing of those 20 packets, we can see there's a link whose delay is significantly longer than the others. Looking at that screenshot, based on those router names, can you guess the location of the two routers at each end of of the link where the, the delay jumps significantly. Remember, each hop is a router. So if I look at this, I'm gonna move this here. And once I put this up on YouTube, I'm gonna zoom in on that for you for, for a few moments. I'm gonna let you take a look at that. And uh, I'll just kind of pause for a moment.
Okay, so obviously you can see where that uh, that jump in time is at, right? The, the delay, the response, and the delay back. So looking at that, what would you say those two hops are? Our choices are hop 10, 11, 12, and 14. We need to pick two, and it should be pretty obvious. Where does that delay increase? It increments up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then all of a sudden it jumps significantly, the delay, the response back. 89 milliseconds for New York, and then 174, 173, and was it Albervillez? Or I'm not sure that I'm probably, probably messed that name up. I'm sure somebody can probably pronounce it better than I. Um, but what, look at the next hop. Where's that? Where's, where's Paris? Anybody know where the city of Paris is? Yeah. So obviously, our answers are 11 and 12. It's crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Now, why, why does it take longer? I, yeah, I know there's, it's, it has to do with distance, right? But why? In all likelihood, it boils down to the speed of light. Very well. They're not using copper wire for this stuff. I sure hope they're not. Be a lot of copper wire. If you're using fiber optic, we're limited by the speed of light. Speed of light is not unlimited. So there's a delay getting that response back. Doesn't matter whether you're pinging across town, pinging across the state, pinging across your country. It's all limited by the speed of light and the time it takes to get it back. That's all our questions in our Wireshark Lab for ICMP. Hopefully that enlightened you a little bit more on how ping works and a little bit on what we see with trace routes. Putting it in action is how we gain the knowledge. Practice, practice, hone your skills. As I always say, I'll see you in the next lab or lesson. Take care, everybody. Have a great day, great evening, great morning. Doesn't matter where you're at. Just depends on your time of day. See you around, everybody.